Good morning. Welcome to the Congregational Church of Austin. We are an open and affirming church of the United Church of Christ. My name is Tom. My pronouns are he, him, his. And on behalf of everyone at the Congregational Church, I welcome you from wherever it is you are participating this morning. This morning is the first Sunday of the month, so as is our tradition, we are celebrating Holy Communion with one another. So I hope you have some bread and a cup prepared so that we can share Christ's meal with one another. If you're new to our gathering and if you have a question about our church, feel free to email the email address that's listed below or ask a question on the chat on the side of the screen and somebody will answer. As we gather on this Sunday morning, let us remember that the Apostle Paul encourages us, the followers of Jesus Christ, to put on the whole armor of God. Because God is calling us to engage in spiritual battle. Wrap the belt of truth around your waist, Paul says. Cover your upper body with the breastplate of righteousness. Slip your feet into whatever shoes will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Defend yourself with the shield of faith. Wield the sword of the Spirit. Now whether we like to think in these terms of spiritual warriorship or not, I think many of us recognize that we are living in the midst of great conflict and that we cannot avoid our responsibility to take our place in the great struggles of our time as Christ's people. So, in response to all the lies that we are hearing, let us fasten the belt of truth around our waist. In response to the unrighteousness that is causing so much suffering, let us put on the breastplate of righteousness. In response to those who are intentionally sowing conflict and division, let us put on shoes that will move us to proclaim the gospel of peace. In response to those who are cynically using religion as a tool to manipulate, dominate, and oppress, let us take up the shield of faith in the God of liberation, love, and justice in whose name, in whose spirit, we gather right now. Good morning. Join me in our call to presence as we light our Christ candles. And while we can't be together in person, we can gather in spirit, heart, and flame through our candles. In our own physical spaces and shared sacred time, we bring to the light all that we brought with us to church this morning. We light our candles on our altars and connect with one another at our community altar and the world this Sunday morning. I encourage you to light a candle at home and read this liturgy wherever you are along with us. We set aside our distractions to be fully present and to create sacred time and space no matter where we are. We come to listen to one another and to be open to the holy. We will suspend our judgments and banish exclusion from our vocabulary. We will turn to wonder, welcome groundlessness, and lean into our questions. And we will emerge from our time together feeling renewed, full of peace, and less burdened than when we arrive today. May it be so. Amen.
Our reading today comes from the Apostle Paul in his letters to the Romans, chapters 8, verses 35 through 39. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It was one of those days. I was staring into the abyss of corruption, constitutional crisis, and COVID-19. I was raging and grieving into my cell phone on speakerphone as I held it and talked to my elderly, wise, and mystical friend, Nikki Immel, in Lano. I've known Nikki for over 30 years. She's over 80 years old. We met at a Christian retreat called Walk to Emmaus a good number of years ago, and our friendship began and evolved from there. Nikki can tell me pointed truths in such a loving way. It's one reason I prize our friendship. She makes things easy to hear. After I got done venting and ranting, Nikki paused and then answered, all shall be well. It was such an extraordinary response, it stopped me in my tracks. All shall be well? The first person I heard put it that way was Julian of Norwich, an English mystic. She lived in the north of England in the 14th and 15th centuries she was known as an anchoress, which meant she was attached to the church of St. Julian, where she got her name, but she saw people who came to her for advice, counsel, what we might call today spiritual direction. We don't even know what her real name was, and I rather like the idea. She had so little ego, she didn't care whether her real name was known or not. And, uh, but she did say, all shall be well, 
and all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. So Nikki and I, Nikki Immel and I, were both members of the Julian of Norwich fan club, so to speak. We like her. She wrote the first book known to be written by a woman, at least in England. It's called Revelations of Divine Love. And her work has intrigued and, intrigued and captivated many of us for a long time. A song was even written using Julian's words. And the opening verse goes, Loud are the bells of Norwich and the people come and go. Here by the Tower of Julian I tell them what I know. Ring out bells of Norwich and let the winter come and go. All shall be well again, I know. So fast forward five centuries, visualize Anne on the corner of New York City of uh, Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street in front of the New York Public Library. Uh, I also call it the corner of walk and don't walk. Lots of traffic, very busy. And I was several years into being a pastor. It was 1989. I'd known of Julian of Norwich for a few years since just before leaving seminary, and I found out about her at a time of grieving and difficulty. Uh, so it was not unlike today in that regard. I'd left my seminary friends in Dallas and was at a pastorate in a small hill country town of Medina near Kerrville, small community of mostly elderly parishioners, and I was very homesick. It wasn't easy then either to believe that all shall be well. Now in New York City, doing continuing education for pastors nearby, I had a wild and crazy dream I was trying to fulfill. I wanted to meet the author Madeline Lengel, who was from there, who wrote the children's book, A Wrinkle in Time, and many books about faith. She was one of my mentors and heroes, and I'd landed at the public library because that was a place I could look up her phone number while the phone company was on strike. This was before the internet where you could look up stuff, and that's a long story in itself, but there I was. And I got on the phone with her, and I couldn't believe that I actually got on the phone with her, but I called the cathedral, and she she uh, answered after the whoever answered the first time directed me there. And there she was on the phone, and I, I just blurted out, Mrs. Franklin, which was her married name, her real name, I said, Mrs. Franklin, your books have meant so much to me, and I'd like to come meet you. And she said, come on down. It sounds unbelievable, but it happened. And she told me what bus to take, and I did. I got to the cathedral, found the library. I recall, it was November of 1989, she had on a black wool skirt with a long, very bright pink thread stuck to it, hanging down. I love that. And her coffee mug had a unicorn on it. I don't recall what we talked about, but it was like visiting a movie star or maybe the Pope or something. She used big words like linga franca, but then she's a writer, so she had a great vocabulary. And while we were talking, I looked at her nearby wooden shelf of books and knickknacks, and there was a greeting card on it. And it said in decorative blue letters, all shall be well, and all shall be well and all manner of thing shall be well. Julian of Norwich. And she saw me looking at it, and I said, that, that's Julian of Norwich. She said, oh yes, she's one of my favorites. And then she picked up the card, handed it over, and said to me, here, have it. There's not much more to tell. I left soon after, reached out to shake her hand, and she said, a hug is fine which is a big deal because people who were born out east in New England and New York are not usually big huggers. So that was nice. We hugged and I left. And I tell you, I couldn't feel the ground under my feet. I couldn't feel the sidewalk as I headed out. But uh, I keep thinking of all shall be well and the number of people I've quoted that to during this COVID time they latch on to the phrase, let the winter come and go. And they'll say to me things like, it's a winter, isn't it? And I say, yes, I think it is. The last verse of the song is, 
Julian of Norwich telling the bells of Norwich to ring anyway, no matter what's going on. And it says, ring for the golden daffodil, the flower in the snow. Ring for the golden daffodil and tell them what I know. All shall be well, I'm telling you. Let the winter come and go. All shall be well again, I know. God uses broken things. It takes broken soil to produce a crop, broken clouds to give rain, broken grain to give bread, broken bread to give strength. It is the broken alabaster box that gives forth perfume. It is Peter weeping bitterly who returns to greater power than ever. The Baptist preacher Vance Havner wrote those words. CJ recently introduced me to Vance Havner. Thanks, CJ. God uses broken things. A few weeks ago, I reflected on the phrase from Hebrew scripture, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I noted that the Hebrew word that translators translate as Fear more literally means to quiver or tremble or break up inside. When we encounter God and we break up inside, that is when we begin to become wise. Or perhaps when our lives break up and we encounter God using our brokenness, that is when we begin to become wise. And remember that the word compassion literally means gut-wrenching or gut-tearing, gut-breaking. We see someone else suffer, someone in pain, and it breaks our gut. And not only breaks our heart, it breaks our gut. God uses broken things. God uses 
our broken lives. God uses our broken hearts. God uses our broken guts. In the name of the one who broke bread with broken people, who broke his own body in solidarity with broken people, and who offered his broken body for the healing of all people, we pray for our own brokenness this morning and pray that God may use our brokenness to make us wiser, more responsive to others in pain, and more powerful in our efforts to liberate, heal, and reconcile this world. So as we gather together at the table with the bread and the cup that we have prepared for this meal, we recall that Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God for the bread, and broke the bread and said to his disciples, this is my body which is broken for you. And we remember that he took the cup that was at the table and he said, this wine is my blood. It is shed for you, shed from my broken body. And he said, eat from this broken bread and drink from this cup in remembrance of me. So sisters, brothers, kindred in Christ, let us now take the bread that is broken for us Dip it in the cup or drink from your cup and let us share this meal together. The body and the cup that Jesus Christ shares with us. And let us give thanks for this meal. God of life, God who brings new life from brokenness. God who brings new life from death. We give you thanks for the wisdom, the compassion, and the power that we derive from the living Christ, who we remember by sharing this meal. In his name we give you thanks. In his name we offer ourselves in service to you, and in service to your creation. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
I'd like to thank each and every one of you for continuing to support the Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Your support enables us to continue our worship gatherings like this. It supports our ministry in the community, especially through groups like Central Texas Interfaith. And it supports our gathering together for our social ministry and fellowship and support for one another's lives. This morning, I'd like to highlight the ministry of Labyrinth Student Ministry, the ministry that we support on the UT campus. As you know, Labyrinth is a safe place for students to gather to explore their own lives and their own identity, their own spirituality in their own faith. It's a place for students to come together and support one another socially. And they're still meeting virtually, even though they cannot come together physically. And one of the best ways that we can support Labyrinth right now is by sharing food with Labyrinth and sharing food with the students. Labyrinth has always had the ritual and tradition of coming together for a family meal each week. And while they can't be together physically right now, Labyrinth is still providing ways to have a weekly meal virtually or distantly and still providing quick grab-and-go meals. So Labyrinth is asking us to help them stack its food pantries full of food that students can come and take with them and then eat as they're sharing time together virtually. And this food can include tuna packets, frozen burritos, pudding cups, granola bars, carrot sticks, boxes of raisins, and anything like that. So I am going to start putting some announcements in our e-news regarding this food that Labyrinth is asking us to help provide. And if you can bring this food and drop it off at church, Donna is here from Tuesdays to Fridays, and you can coordinate with her, and then we can get that food to Renee and to Labyrinth to continue supporting the students who are gathering together at UT. So please, consider doing this to help out Labyrinth, and again, thank you for your continued support of the Congregational Church of Austin in all of our ministry. God, we give you thanks for the gift of life and the gift of new life that we receive through the living Christ. In response, we offer you these gifts and we offer you our very lives. And we pray that they may be transformed into ministry that brings your liberating, healing, reconciling love to your creation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sisters, brothers, kindred in Christ, may God bless you, and may you be a blessing to everyone that you encounter this week, whether it be in person, or on a computer screen, or in an email, or on a phone call. And every day when you get up this week, wrap the belt of truth around your waist. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, Put on the shoes that will bring you to proclaim peace. Take up the shield of faith in the God of love and justice. Dressed as a disciple of Jesus Christ, 
Do the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shingo.